This is a video I decided to do on the antique arcade number no. three crystal coffee grinder from around the early 1920s. Uh, this particular grinder was very, very popular back then. Uh, they're a little bit on the expensive side now if you get them in good condition like this. Uh, this particular one has the original hopper and lid cast iron body and lever. The catch cup is not the original. It's very old but it's not the original. The original had number designations on here for uh, the amount of grinds you needed. But the reason I decided to do this video is that YouTube really doesn't have any uh, how-to on this particular model. Uh, I have been in the market lately for a new Burr manual grinder. From my research, the Burr grinders are the best grinders to have, and the uh, manual type are more, uh, I should say, they're less expensive than the electric, and a lot of people like them more because they don't generate any heat, which could hurt the beans. Uh, I was all set to buy the Hario manual uh, grinder, which is very, very popular. And before I did so, I said, well, I have had this antique grinder on my wall for about a year, strictly as a display. I said, I know it functions, but let's see what kind of grinds we can get. So as I tried it, I was surprised to see that the grinds that came in the glass were extremely coarse, and I mean unusable coarse. And I know that the unit has a adjustment knob right here and I'll demonstrate this a little later what it does and as you turn this adjustment knob to the right the grinds will get finer and finer but I had it all the way over to the right and the grinds were just way too coarse so I felt well that's the way it was back then I guess and um, I was stuck with it so it bothered me though and the next day I said uh, the, the problem I'm thinking might be is that since this has been up here decorative purposes, there's whole beans that are in the actual burr grinder mechanism. And those whole beans may be stopping this adjustment knob from tightening up the two burr grinders. Uh, the grinders uh, meet to make a finer grind, and if there's uh, something in there, it's going to prevent this knob from tightening. So I took the entire unit apart and sure enough there were whole beans in the mechanism. So I cleared everything out, put it back, and then I was able to turn the adjustment knob much, much further to the right. And then as I put the beans in and cranked it, I got an extremely fine espresso style grind. Uh, I was very happy to see that. And the only problem that you have with something like this is the fact that if you have all these beans in here, and if you start on a very, very coarse setting, what may happen is you'll get your beans, but as you go to a finer setting, you may get a little bit of inconsistency in the beginning because what's going to happen is those other ones that from the previous grind, the coarser setting, those beans are still in there. Now you go to tighten it, and again, you may not be able to tighten it as far as you want. And so in the beginning, until you grind and, and, and disperse the remaining coarser beans, then you'll start getting the new beans and get finer, tighten it more and finer and finer. But in the glass, then, like I'm saying, in the beginning, you may get the little bit coarser beans than the finer ones that you want. So the idea is obviously to clear out your... If you're going to keep going back and forth from, say, very coarse to very fine, you're going to have to clear out what's in there. Now, the problem being is for something like this, you've got a full jar of beans, and there's no simple way to remove this hopper. Uh, you can take these screws off the side, which loosens it up, and as you pull this out, you've got to be careful because if you still have a jar full of beans, the bottom of this hopper is open. So as you pull it out, the beans are just going to go all over the floor. So the one way around a situation like this is 
if you're going to change drastic settings on something like this where it's not really portable uh, what you want to do is just have let's say one morning you want French press style coarse beans so I would say just put enough in here for what you're going to use get your grinds and then the next day you say okay well now I want espresso uh, style grind just crank this out until it's all empty then put some new beans in or I should say change your setting first then put the new beans in then you can crank and then you can go back and forth like that once you know though that the setting that you want in other words let's say you're going to use drip coffee grinds and you know the setting you want and you're going to continuously have that every day then you can fill your hopper all the way up and just keep cranking every day so here I'll go ahead and demonstrate the usage of it. Uh, what I like about this particular unit is that it is much, much faster than the Harios that they put out today. And the only reason being is because the unit is so much bigger. These, this housing is where they keep the burr grinders and you can, they're almost that, that size compared to the very small size of the Harios uh, and others that they put out today. So that's the reason why it can crank it out so quick. So here I'll go ahead and demonstrate it and then I'll show you the different grind sizes. I thought I would do this for a demonstration purpose too since I had to take it apart and I wanted to show you the uh, burr grinders in here. Uh, this is the one that actually turns and the other is not actually movable like in other ones. This in here, if you can see those ridges going all the way around, this is what grinds this plate up against the body to crush the beans. So you can see here down below, I'm sorry the lighting's a little bad. Right in here, when you turn the knob, you will see this is on the coarsest setting. As you turn the adjustment knob, you'll see it getting tighter and tighter and tighter. Whereas now we're getting into the fine, fine espresso style grinds, which are pretty much the finest. So that's the adjustment knob I was speaking about as you turn it. Okay, so what I've done right now is uh, I've emptied out the container. I only have a few beans in there now just to demonstrate the different settings of uh, different qualities of, of grain that you can get. Right now I have the adjustment knob here tightened as far as to the right as it will go and I'm just going to back it out a half a turn. That's it. And put the retaining nut back on and this will produce the pretty much to be the finest grain you can get with this. I can go a little bit finer but just enough where it's, the handle is loose just to give you an idea here and you can see how much, I don't know if you can see it, how much of the retaining screw is sticking out past the nut. When we get coarser you'll see that that will almost disappear which designates how you are backing out uh, the spring. Alright, so I'll grind this. That was just a, not even a handful of beans, and this is espresso quality powder. And after the demonstration, I will show you in different containers the different coarseness. Okay, so now I will go ahead 
and loosen the retaining nut and I'm going to counterclockwise one turn tighten down the retaining nut and just put a handful, not even a handful of beans in and grind this to show you the difference here the reason I'm holding on so tight is I only have one screw m mounting uh, this unit to the wall because it was before just decorative and I like as little holes as possible so I will now that I'm going to use is put an additional screw into the wall and I won't have to hold on to this as tight as I am and that's coarser yet I don't know if you could see in the video it was darker as you saw it dropping and the last one will be another turn loosen the retaining nut turn the adjustment knob let me take it off to show you a little more clearly there it is that's what I'm turning here one more additional turn and of course you can find your own settings uh, for the style grind you need uh, it's an infinite amount of settings you could have I'm doing one full turn just to demonstrate another handful and crank that out. Okay, and coarser yet. And now I'll put them side by side so you can see the difference. Okay, uh, here's the difference. Uh, it might be a little tough to see it, but I'll pour it out on the board so you can get a better idea. When I initially told you about the initial use of mine, this is how coarse the grinds were coming out, and I thought that was the best it could do. I mean, they're all they're chunks. And here in our demonstration, this here was the fine powder that was on like a half a turn open. I'm sorry if it's blurry this was the one turn more open and this was two complete turns open this would probably be best for French press so I'll pour it out a little bit maybe you can see it a little better there's number one and we can get it even a little finer than that there's one turn open and this was the final one two turns open you can see the size of them there so again so there it is the antique arcade number no. three crystal coffee grinder uh, these are readily available today online uh, depending on the condition and the originality of the parts is going to determine the price as I mentioned before this has the original hopper lid cast iron body and lever handle the catch cup is the only thing that's not original this ran about hundred and thirty dollars and um, you can find them in various conditions if they don't have the original hopper it'll be less money uh, you just want to make sure that it is in working condition so um, these are great grinders uh, they look great on the wall and uh, they're very usable <laughs>